Hey everybody, this is a 30 minute heart opening yoga practice. It's a power practice and it jumps right into it. So if you need a bit of a warm up, here's a link. Come into child's pose. Reach your hips back towards your feet. Let your head rest on the mat and reach your arms out in front. Close your eyes and let your whole upper body be very heavy. Begin to breathe in and out through your nose. Focusing on making your inhales and exhales of equal length. On your next inhale, come forward. Come all the way down into your belly. Reach the arms out to your side and bring your right hand underneath your shoulder. Bend your right leg, press the right hand into the ground and bring the body up and over, coming into a nice stretch on the left shoulder. On the next inhale, come back to center, extend the right arm. Bend the left arm, bringing the left hand underneath the left shoulder. Bend the left leg and press into the left hand. Breathe into the front of the right shoulder. On your next inhale, come back to center. Bring your hands by your side, elbows straight back behind you, curl the toes. Come up with a flat back on the knees and reach your hips back to child's pose with your toes curled. Breathe into the bottoms of the feet, just noticing any sensations. And on your next inhale, round forward and lift your hips for downward facing dog. First one of the day, so be gentle. Step your feet up the mat a couple of inches just to clarify your foundation. Picture your body as an upside down letter V. Spin your inner thighs up towards the sky. And on your next inhale, rise up onto the toes and exhale your heels down to the ground. Don't worry if they don't get all the way there. Spread your fingers, continue to press the mat away from you. And take your gaze towards your navel. As you inhale, lift your right leg as high as you can, spread the right toes. As you exhale, step the foot to the front of the mat. Find your sense of balance, right knee directly over right ankle or slightly behind, rise up, high lunge. Breathe into the left hip flexor. Keep pressing out of the bottom of the left foot, bring the hands to your heart and take the left knee down. Send your hips forward, low lunge, reach your arms back behind you, but imagine that your spine is very, very long, no compression in the low back. On your next inhale, bring your hands down to the ground. Rise up, spider your fingers forward and use your core strength to lift your back leg. From here, we'll stack the hips, coming into half moon pose. Stack the shoulders, reach your left arm up to the sky, activate your left toes. Then if you want to, you can take sugar cane pose where you'll bend the top leg, reach back and grab hold of the foot. Feel your right hip joint directly over your right ankle. Keep a little micro bend in the leg so you're not hyperextending. And when you're ready, we'll release and lower back into warrior two. For warrior two, we want the front knee directly over the front ankle or slightly behind. Arms parallel to the ground, hips are even, pressing into the outside edge of the back foot. On the next inhale, lift the right arm, look up, breathe space in between the ribs. On your next inhale, windmill the arms down to the ground. Use your core strength to step back into three-legged plank. Lower down. Bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Elongate the spine. Rise up through the crown of the head. No compression in the low back. Beginners, stay here. If you're a little bit more advanced, come into upward facing dog. So just the tops of the feet and the hands are on the mat. Your knees are lifted away from the mat. And if it's okay for your neck, you can let your head go back. No compression in the low back. And on your next inhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Press the mat away, long armpits. No tension in your neck. Checking in with your breath.
And on your next inhale, we'll lift the left leg as high as you can. Spread the left toes. And use your core strength to step the left foot to the front of the mat. Come onto your fingertips, elongate the spine. Rise up, high lunge. Settle in, press out of the bottom of the right foot. Activating that right leg, breathing into the right hip flexor, left knee directly above the left ankle or slightly behind. As you inhale, hands to the heart, take your right knee down to the ground. Come into low lunge, reach your arms back behind you, imagining that your spine is very long, no compression in the low back, little back bend here. As you inhale, hands come down to the ground, rise up off the back knee, spider your fingers forward and use your core strength to lift the back leg up. Then stack the hips, spread the left fingertips, just the left fingertips are on the ground and imagine that the left hand is like a straw. So you're pulling up energy from the earth rather than sinking all your weight into your left hand. Feel an upward movement, upward energy through the left arm. And then choose to stay there or maybe you bend the right leg, coming into sugar cane pose. Opening up as much as you can, stacking the hips, stacking the shoulders, breathing into any areas of tension, little micro bend in that standing leg so you're not hyperextending. And when you're ready, we'll gently release the pose and use the core strength and sense of balance to come into warrior two. For warrior two, we want the outer edge of the right foot parallel to the short edge of the mat. Hips are even, left knee directly above, left ankle or slightly behind. Arms are strong. If someone came over and pushed your arm down, they wouldn't go anywhere. Chest is open. Look out over your left middle finger. On your next inhale, rotate the arms. Look up. Breathe space between the ribs. When you're re ready, windmill the arms down, hands come down. Use your core strength to step back, three-legged plank, and lower down with the elbows all the way behind you. Elbows underneath the shoulders rise up. Extend through the crown of the head. Stay here if you need a little bit of a rest or come into upward facing dog. Hands underneath the shoulders, arms strong, tops of the feet on the ground. Knees lifted, spine really long, puff the chest out. Let your head go back if that's okay for your neck. Picture the body as a sideways J. On your next inhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Take a couple deep breaths. We lift your hips up to the sky. Invite the heels down to the ground. On your next inhale, rise onto the toes, bend the knees, and hop forward. As you inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, fingers in line with the toes, melt forward, chin to shins. Bend the knees if you have to. Inhale, rise all the way up with a flat back. Exhale, hands to heart. Feet together, knees together, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, bend the left elbow. And then bring the right arm down and grab hold of the hand. So you can use this yoga strap here or a belt or a tie. Sit low for Utkatasana. As you inhale, rise up and we'll switch sides. So bend the left uh, elbow back behind you, right elbow up to the sky. Grab hold of the hands or use a yoga strap or a belt or a tie. Sit low, squeeze the legs together and sit back on your feet. So if you could look down, you would still see your toes. Tuck the tailbone, rise up. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, upper body comes forward, right leg lifts. Make your body the capital letter T. Spin the inner right thigh up towards the sky, toes pointed straight down towards the mat. Make your body very long. Arms are very strong. And on your next inhale, we'll slowly come down to seated for seated spinal twist. Hook the right elbow to the outside of the left leg. Look behind you, option to take a bind. Use your yoga strap or a belt or a tie. With each exhale, we're looking out over the left shoulder and twisting from the navel a little bit more and a little bit more. Shoulder blades drawn toward one another, open chest. And when you're ready, look forward. Bring the fingertips down to the ground, 
rise up for standing split. So it doesn't matter how high the back leg gets. What we want to do is feel the left hip joint over the left ankle. As you inhale, bring the feet together and as you exhale, hug the ankles, forward fold. As you rise up, take Utkatasana, chair pose. Squeeze the legs together, feet together, long spine, tuck the tailbone. As you inhale, rise up to stand. Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale all the way on the right foot. Swing the left leg back behind you, picturing the body as the letter T. Spinning the inner left thigh up towards the sky, left toes point straight down towards the ground. On your next inhale, begin to slowly bend the right leg and come to sit down for seated spinal twist. Hook the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Look out over your right shoulder, initiate the twist from the navel, an option to take a bind here. Keep that right knee pointed up towards the sky. You don't want it to splay out to the side. Draw your shoulder blades toward one another, open the collarbones. With each exhale, twisting just a little bit more. And on your next inhale, look ahead, bring the fingertips to the ground, come into standing split on the other side. You'll notice that one side is usually tighter than the other. That's normal and really nothing to worry about. On your next inhale, bring both feet together. And let the upper body melt forward into forward fold. On your next inhale, sink the hips, squeeze the legs together, arms up overhead, tuck the tailbone, long spine, Utkatasana. Plug the arms into the torso, look ahead or look up. And when you're ready, come to standing, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, arms out in front, rise onto the toes. Squeeze the legs together, use your core strength to come all the way down to the ground. When you get there, we're going to come onto the knees and then take the tops of the feet down. Knees are hip distance, feet are directly behind your knees. We're coming into camel pose here. So as you inhale, bring your hands to your hips, press your hips forward, let your head go back, elbows straight back behind you. And maybe take the full expression by bringing the hands to the feet. Lift your heart, send the hips forward. Picturing the body as a backwards letter D. Breathe full deep breaths, and when you're ready to release, come directly into child's pose and rest your head on the mat. Extend your arms out in front or option to take them to your side. Whatever feels best for you, do that. From here, we're going to come into headstand. So grab hold of opposite arms. Make sure that you're really grabbing hold of the outside of the arms so that you know that your hands are in the right spot. Keeping your elbows just like that, interlace your fingers. Bring the top of your head down to the ground and then already begin activating your upper back. So you wanna feel like a round in your upper back between the shoulder blades. From there, curl the toes and then walk until your pelvis is over your head. Lift one leg. Try not to hop up, just lift one leg and see if maybe you can use your core strength to lift the other leg. Reach your legs up towards the sky. Picture your head, shoulders, pelvis, knees and ankles stacked. Then when you're ready, see if you can bring one leg down and use your core strength to come out really slowly. You'll have to take the other leg a little bit forward because it'll be like a seesaw. Come all the way down and into child's pose. Take a few breaths here, and then when you're ready, we'll do it on the other side. To prepare, grab opposite arms, making sure that your fingers are really grabbing the outside of the arms. 
Interlace your fingers the other way. Bring the head down, round in the upper back, and walk, walk, walk until your pelvis is over your head. Lift the other leg, and don't kick. Just see what happens if you lift, 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 and come up. If you lift one leg and your other leg isn't coming up, it's probably because your pelvis isn't over your head. It might feel like it is, but ask somebody in your house or use your camera to take a picture and see where your pelvis is. When you're ready to come down, challenge yourself to come slowly using one leg, letting the pelvis stay over the head, and then immediately coming into child's pose. On your next inhale, round forward, curl the toes. Lift the hips for downward facing dog. Just taking a mental note of this downward facing dog compared to the first one you did at the beginning of practice. When you're ready, lift your right leg, spread your right toes. Use your core strength to step the foot to the front of the mat. And bring the left foot down at a 45 degree angle for warrior one. So the hips are facing forward, right knee directly above right ankle or slightly behind. Bring your hands to your hips so you can feel that your hips are facing forward. Then interlace your fingers, press the palms together. If this is too much for you, grab opposite elbows. Then bring the upper body forward, let your head hang heavy, and then pull the shoulders away from the ears. Right knee stays directly above right ankle or slightly behind. Keep pressing into the outer edge of the left foot. And when you're ready, rise up. From here, we'll open up into warrior two. So outer edge of the left foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat. Look out over your right middle finger and reach your upper body forward, bringing the right fingers down to the mat. Stack the shoulders, lift the left arm. From here, take a bind and you can use your yoga strap or a belt to help you. Then we're gonna heel toe the back foot forward until the right knee is directly above the right ankle and we have enough strength and balance to step the left foot to the front of the mat. Transfer your weight onto the left foot. Begin to lift your right foot up. Use your core strength. Make it so your right leg is not heavy. When you're all the way up, see what happens if you try to extend and press out of the bottom of the right leg, extending that leg. As you inhale, come back down, transfer the weight. Use your sense of balance and your core strength to step the left foot to the back of the mat, warrior two feet. Release the bind, we'll go out the same way we came in. Coming back into warrior two. And then windmill the arms down and step back for three-legged plank, good job. Elbows straight back behind you coming all the way down, sphinx pose. Option to stay here if you need a little bit of a rest or come into upward facing dog. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders in one long line. Let the head go if that's okay for your neck. Roll over the toes for downward facing dog. Lift the hips. Spin the inner thighs up towards the sky. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Let your head go, no tension in your neck. And on your next inhale, lift your left leg, spread your left toes. Use your core strength to step the left foot to the front of the mat and pivot on the back foot until it's 45 degrees. Hips are facing forward, left knee directly above left ankle or slightly behind. Elongate the spine, hands on the hips so you feel your hips are facing forward. And then rise up with the arms. Press into the outer edge of the back foot and on your next inhale, interlace your fingers behind your back, press your palms together. If it's too much, grab opposite elbows. As you inhale, come forward with the upper body, lift the shoulders away from the ears, let your head hang heavy. Left knee stays directly above left ankle or slightly behind. Spin the inner left thigh up towards the sky. Keep pressing into the outer edge of the right foot. And when you're ready, rise up and we'll take warrior two. So open up the left foot so the outer edge is parallel to the short edge of the mat. You might need to take a bigger stance. Hands on the hips so you feel that they're even. Open up the arms and make them very strong. Look out over your left middle finger and on your next inhale, Move just the torso forward. Then rotate the arms, look up. Option to take the bind. Use a yoga strap or a belt to help you. 
Then heel toe the feet forward. Look at the ground but out in front of you and use your core strength to step that right foot to the front of the mat. Transfer the weight to the right foot and rise up. Make it so your left leg is not heavy, almost as if it doesn't matter if your hands are bound. When you rise up, see what happens when you press out of the bottom of the left foot. Spread the toes, elongate the leg, and when you're ready, begin to bend the leg and slowly come down. You'll notice that one side is usually more steady than the other. Transfer the weight once you get down. Use your core strength to step back. Open up the foot. Coming into warrior two feet, release the bind and rise up. Windmill the arms, come down. Use your core strength to step back, three-legged plank, lower down, elbows straight back behind you. Elbows underneath the shoulders, sphinx pose. Spine is very long. Stay here or come into upward facing dog. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders in one long line. Let the head go if that's okay for your neck, just the tops of the feet and the hands are on the mat. And when you're ready, roll over your toes into downward facing dog. On your next inhale, rise onto the toes, bend the knees, use your core strength to hop forward. Halfway lift, look ahead. As you exhale, fingers in line with the toes, chin to shins, heels, knees and hips in one line. Inhale, rise up to Tadasana, mountain pose. On your next inhale, sink your hips, squeeze the legs together, feet together, Utkatasana, then rise up onto the toes. Come all the way down until you're seated on the mat. Remove the flesh from underneath the sits bones and bring your hands halfway back behind you. Spread your fingers as much as you can and press into the heels until the bottoms of your feet come onto the mat and lift your hips, lift your heart. This is Parvottanasana, really great stretch for the shoulders and whole front body. When you're ready, release the pose, bring the arms out in front, remove the flesh underneath the sits bones, coming into Navasana, boat pose. Plug the arms into the torso. Lift the legs so the shins are parallel to the ground and option to stay there or extend and press out of the bottoms of the feet. Press the feet together, spread the toes. Then when you're ready, gently release, bring the arms up overhead, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. We're going to come into wheel pose here. So hands are by the ears, fingers pointed in towards your body, elbows straight up to the sky. Bring your feet as close to your butt as you can, toes pointed directly away from you. Knees are hip distance, feet are hip distance. We're going to try to keep this stance with our feet and our hands as we press and lift up. Once you do that, step your feet back a couple of inches just to clarify the foundation. Look between your thumbs. Breathe into the shoulders, breathe into the chest and the armpits, lift the hips, lift the chest, breathe full, deep, powerful breaths, and then imagine that you have a yoga block in between your knees and squeeze that imaginary yoga block together. So you're not actually moving your knees, but you're having this sensation. You can extend the legs and make them long if you want a deeper back bend, or just stay in it and when you're ready, release the pose. Bring your arms overhead, knees together. Take your feet mat distance. Low back glued to the ground. On your next inhale, extend the left leg and invite the right knee in towards the chest. Pull the right leg in, breathing into the back of the hip. And then when you're ready, cactus the right arm and pull the right knee up and over the body, looking out over the left, over the right shoulder. Initiate the twist from the navel. And with each exhale, see if you can bring that right knee and right shoulder closer towards the ground, as if gravity is pulling you down. As you inhale, come back to center, take it to the other side. Invite the left knee in towards the chest. 
Tuck your chin a little bit so the back of your neck is against the mat. And then when you're ready, cactus the right arm, pull the knee up and over the body, look out over your left shoulder. And with each exhale, see if you can invite that left shoulder and left knee down towards the ground. Close your eyes, let your whole body be really effortless here. On your next inhale, we'll come back to center. And from here, we're going to go into shoulder stand. So bring the hands to the hips, bring your pelvis up overhead, lift your legs, support your low back with your hands, and keep your gaze towards your navel. Don't turn your head when you're in this position. Keep pulling the legs up. And when you're ready, we'll begin to move into plow pose. So bring the knees in towards the forehead. Let the hands come down to the ground. And then extend your legs, plugging the toes in towards the ground behind your head. Press out of the bottoms of the feet and breathe into the hamstrings. Breathe into the back. Lift your hips even more. And then on your next inhale, super slowly begin to lift the toes. Go slower than you want to go as you press into the ground, using your hands like brakes. Almost as if you can feel each vertebrae of your spine as it unravels super slowly down to the ground. From here, take your legs 45 degrees. We're going to come into fish pose. Take the top of the head towards the ground. Lift the heart. Interlace the fingers and release the index fingers. Lift the chest even more. Use your core strength to hold those legs up. Press your big toe mounds together. And when you're ready, gently release the pose. Bring the arms up overhead. Take your feet mat distance apart. Close your eyes. Just taking a moment to acknowledge your practice. And when you're ready, take your hands by your sides a little bit wider than mat distance, palms facing up. Coming into Shavasana now. We'll be here for a couple minutes and I'll let you know when Shavasana is up. On your next inhale, begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Bend your left leg and roll onto your right side. Keeping your eyes closed, take a deep breath in and deep breath out. 
Then press your left hand into the ground and send yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Bring the hands to your heart, just acknowledging your practice. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.